It's Calico time. So we've arrived at our first spot. Uh, the sun is just peeking out. Uh, it's a little overcast. So uh, I'm gonna fish a darker bait, either like a big hammer toast, a red calico hunter, because that really not only stands out in these low light conditions, but mimics the forage. I just pulled this little buddy off a little kelp string here. These are what big bass love to eat. Look at he's shaking his hand at the camera because he's like, oh, I agree. Um, but they really like to eat these uh, little kelp crabs. They cling to the kelp and if they fall off, they're an easy meal. And if you notice, it's a pretty good little color combination there. That's kind of why we fish these brownish orangish baits a lot. So I'm gonna let him go. I'm gonna make sure he grabs onto something so he's, oh, I think I killed him. That's not good. Anyway, I didn't kill him, I'm just joking, but he's uh, kind of acting funny down there. But uh, So we're gonna fish these darker baits. It's our first spot. We're off an area that I like to call the golf course. A lot of guys call it the bunker. Uh, bunker's a little that way, but kind of the golf course area. And it's usually a really good place to start the morning. Unfortunately, my trolling motor's a little broken, so it's kind of hard to work with this minimal wind. So we're just kind of bumping ourselves into these little pockets. Jared's already got a couple nice bites. Uh, so we're gonna keep working the zone and hopefully pull some big fish, but it's the first of several spots we're gonna check out this morning. And uh, hopefully the condition kind of gets a little bit better. We don't have much current right now. We don't have much wind to push us along. So stay tuned. We're happy to be out here. Let's take some care. So I think we figured these fish out. They're on these outer lanes. Uh, we're getting the little wolf cats here. Jared's got one. We got followers probably. All right. Already got followers. There he is. Double hookup. We figured these fish out. They're on outer lanes. Oh my gosh. You seen all these fish. It's really good been here for about a half hour we probably got a dozen fish not the hugest grade but they're eating the swim baits with a vengeance let's take another cast here let's see like if we can do it again probably a bunch of followers the one jumped out of the water after a bait really yeah let's see what we can't do oh, our fish keeps looking good i think that's the first i one. love it i love it i love it calco bass fishing palos verdes home waters Casting down the lanes, bring those swim baits real slow. And just watching them load on. A oh, little bit of a better grade of fish here. It's a nice three pounder. Came up in a bit the red rum, burned pretty high in the column here, so let her go. Still working the stringers. Really good current. The sun's trying to peek out, and if the sun peeks out, I think the bite's gonna turn on a little bit. We've got a nice breeze that's running with the current. So uh, let's uh, keep pounding this water. If it doesn't pick up, we'll go try some stuff. There's Jared with a fish. Oh, followers, followers. Hang on. Followers, ah, oh, he's, oh, he's still there, he's still there. He's still there, he's still there, he went away. He took too long. There we go. Let's see if we can, hey, if we're on him, we're, if we're on him, we're on him, right? Looks like we're not going anywhere. We're still drifting through here. <laughs> oh God, I love when that happens. It's about our average grade out here, 12 to 15 inches. So they're not the biggest fish, but you can just see how pretty they are. Real healthy fish. There's a lot of bait in here. And they definitely get plenty to eat, but you know, that's the great thing about the calico bass. They're just really a gorgeous fish, as you can see. They've got these wonderful splotches, bars. You know, a lot of people, especially if you're a freshwater angler, might not have had a chance to get a good look uh, at these fish. They uh, share a lot of characteristics of freshwater bass. Uh, you know, they got really a bassy feature to them. So you can see they got some spikes up here. Just, just wonderful, wonderful fish. And we just love fishing for them. You can see they got those nice little turquoise dots. And we're gonna give them a kiss because that's what makes these fish come back every time they say, hey, Evan Salve's here. Jeremy Moat's here. You know what I wanna do? I wanna go get a kiss. Ah, you're a wonderful animal. I respect you as a human being. Catch and release. Catch and release these fish. They're 
our most prized inshore gamester, and they should be treated that way. Conservation is the key to a healthy fishery. Goodbye, little buddy. So the sun is out, we're seeing a lot of bait kind of moving through this kelp here, and that means it's time to break out the hard bait and see if the fish respond. The hard bait's a reaction bait, and when I say hard bait, I'm talking about a lucky craft, either a flash minnow or a pointer or something along those lines. There's a lot of manufacturers that make good ones. You see right here, I've got just a flash minnow, uh, kind of in a sardine pattern. Make sure you upgrade the hooks if they don't have good hooks. Uh, you want to make sure they got some substantial hooks. Owner makes kind of their, their stinger hooks. Uh, also upgrade to split rings. You know, those stuff will rip out if you hook a big fish a lot. That's a big pond you're going to see, especially like when you hook a real nice model. So what I'm going to do, uh, I've talked about it in our other videos, but I'm going to find a nice lane, make a long cast. I'm fishing uh, Shimano Crucial 711 MH. I've got a Cronard 100D. This is my hard bait rod when I'm using the bigger baits. I use a Kumara 711 MH when I'm using some of the smaller flash minnows, but this one has more backbone, so it's a little better. So I'm gonna hit the water there, hopefully get it somewhere near a kelp string or something laying down. I'm gonna take kind of a few jerks, little pumps here, and stop it. That bait's gonna dark, dark, dark pause, and these baits suspend. And a lot of times the fish will eat it right on the suspend. So take a couple darts, pause it, couple darts, pause it, and kind of work down the lanes, down the stringers. And because it's a reaction bait, a lot of times the fish are going to see it and they're just going to jump out and grab it right away. They're not going to stare at it. They're not going to follow it for too long. They're going to eat it quick and it's going to be a very violent strike. And you don't have to set the hook when you get bit. That's the biggest mistake people make is they'll get this bite and they're going to swing. They're going to move this like that and you're going to rip those hooks right out. Just let those fish load on. You know, you got two or three big old treble hooks. 
you're not going to have any problem with those fish sticking. And just maintain steady pressure and get them into the boat. But I'm only fishing these baits usually if we got clear water, we got the sun high in the sky, and we got bait moving through the kelp. And we've got that going on right now, so it's a very good tool. slowed down quite a bit. Everything slacked off. We don't have much current. There's no wind laying that kelp down on the surface or pushing us along. We're still picking away here and there. We're catching a nice one every 10-15 minutes, but it's nothing like it was this morning where we had just wolf packs of fish, just phenomenal fishing uh, for a couple hours there. But the good news is the sun's shining. It feels real nice. It still feels like summer even though we're getting into the fall months here. And uh, you know, these nice basking shorts, basking high performance shirt, shirt keeps me cool and ready to perform at my best. Another important part of the equation is going to be sunglasses. If you're not wearing them, you're not giving yourself the advantage of vision. I'm using polarized Maui gems. You can see through the glare. You can see those bass coming from a long ways. And trust me, if you keep your peripheral vision open, you will see these fish a lot of times long before they beat the bait. You'll see them tracking. Here he comes, here he comes. Bam, and you got them. So dress prepared for the sun. Dress prepared for the conditions. And get out there and have a stellar time. We'll see you soon.